you, you should consider this a good sign. Because Jesus said a wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign. But none will be given it but the Son of Man. You see, God gave his sign. The sign was that Jesus would be like Jonah in the belly of the well for three days. And so Jesus Christ was in the belly of the earth for three days. Jesus Christ died and rose again according to the law and the prophets. Look, this same Jesus Christ is coming back and he's going to judge Pleasanton in righteousness. The same Jesus Christ is coming back and he's going to judge every idle word of men. He's going to judge all the rulers of the earth, the rich and the poor, the great and the small. God, God is not persuaded by how rich you are. God is not persuaded by who you are. God said he's coming back. And will he find faith upon the earth in that day? Or will he find people who live in unbelief? Have you, a good day. You Christian, ma'am? Yes, sir. Praise God. Well, there's still a few people here in Pleasanton. Well, you're going to hell because Jesus said you were. Jesus loves you too. Yeah, and he said, unless you repent, you will likewise perish. Jesus never said... Oh, that's okay. Why don't you give Jesus' word an applause? Why don't you applaud Jesus Christ? Oh, you don't love Jesus Christ. Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me and my words, I will be ashamed of you before my Father and the holy angels. Most of you are ashamed of Jesus Christ. Most of you are offended by what I say. But most of you just say, oh, you're just too loud. Well, I wish I could be louder, that I could tell the whole world. But one day, Jesus Christ, one day, Jesus Christ is going to proclaim the gospel to the whole world just before he destroys the world, before he pours out his bold judgments upon the earth. He said, the angel, angel will travel around the world and they will proclaim the everlasting gospel. The everlasting gospel is fear God and give glory to Him. Fear God, that's the everlasting gospel. That's what Jesus said. But most of you have no fear of God. Most of you think that you are God. Most of you are trusting in your riches. You see what God says? On the day of judgment, he's going to call upon you and he's going to call upon your idols. He's going to say, call upon your idols to save you. You see, God is going to mock you just like you mock him. God is going to hold the world in derision just as the whole world has held Jesus Christ in derision. God is going to make a laughing stock of mankind, just as all mankind have made a laughing stock of God's Son. Look, this is what the Bible says. This is love to tell you about judgment. You see, the Bible says if you love your neighbor, you'll tell them the truth. Love warns. Love delights in truth. That's what the Bible says. True. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through Him. But I say to you, who are you trusting in? I know there are some here in this town who love Jesus because otherwise God would have destroyed it already. Just like He said He would not destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, He told Abraham, Jesus said, Abraham... I will not destroy the city if I find five righteous men. And I tell you, Jesus, Jesus sent his angels in there and he found one righteous man. His name was Lot. 
He was righteous before God. And God drug him out of the city by the angels. He drug him out of the city. But I tell you, God may not do that for you. Because you're not a friend of Abraham. You're not, you're not Abraham's nephew. You see, God, here is the prayer of the righteous. Oh, you want to be blessed by God? Humble yourself before God and cry out to Him, and God will bless you. But you want to be cursed by God? Continue on in your rebellion towards God. Is that you? I asked, is that you? Hopefully it's true, but the Bible says, God said in the, in the Proverbs, he said, the wise man sees the danger coming and hides himself, but the foolish man does not and perishes in the way. Look, I tell you that I'm hidden in Christ. My sins have been blotted out by the blood of Christ. You see, when the day of judgment comes, my sin has been removed, but has yours. Good for you. <laughs> no, they're not, are they? Sensual and ungodly. You see, the world, the world and the lust of the world, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is all passing away. Look, today you get a new car, a new truck, and 10 years from now, it's rusting away. Today you buy something that costs you a lot of money, and next year, it's junk. That's the world. The world is passing away, and all the things of the world are going to be destroyed. Everything is wearing out. Your body is wearing out. That's because God has cursed the land. God has cursed the ground. God, you are cursed by God. That's why you get old. That's why you die. That's why disease comes upon you because the soul that sins will die, the Bible says. It is warm. It's loving to tell the truth. It's just what you call love. It's not what Jesus calls love. You see, Jesus warned his people he said he came to save his people from their sin, not so that they could continue on living in sin. Oh, but that you might be set free from the bondage of sin. Jesus said, he whom the Son sets free is free indeed. It's true. He says, you will know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And those of you who sin, Jesus said, you're a slave to sin. And the one who sins does not know Jesus Christ. A slave does not inherit its father's possessions. But the son inherits all things. Jesus Christ inherits the father's kingdom. Jesus Christ gets all things from the father. And what will you get from Jesus Christ? Look, I know the police are driving around here. But you know what? You need to not fear the police, Jesus said. You need to fear him who after he kills your body can cast your soul into hell. Because one day death is going to come for you like a policeman and death is going to drag your soul into hell. And you're going to wait. It's like going to jail. It's like going to jail and awaiting to see the judge of all the earth awaiting in torment. And then you'll come out of there and you'll stand before the great judgment where the book of your life will be opened up, the books. Oh, how many books are written on your life? How many words have you spoken all your life? How many times have you gossiped? How many times have you slandered? How many times have you taken the name of God, the name of Jesus as a cuss word? How many things have you stolen? How many times have you looked with lust on a man or a woman? How many times? These things are not hidden but from God. 
These things are not going to be covered up. They're not going to be swept under the carpet. And he's going to say, oh, I love you. Just come on in. Jesus Christ is not like Grandpa. Jesus Christ is not like Santa Claus. Jesus said, be holy as I am holy. Be perfect. Well, if you have Jesus Christ, he makes you perfect. Praise God. Praise God. Glory to God. Oh, it's, you know what glorifies God? Oh, you know what glorifies God? A man and a woman who are married and they love God. Man and a woman who have children, they glorify God. But are you glorifying God? Jesus said on the Sermon on the Mount, I'll read it to you. It's, you'll probably like it better anyway. Did I hear you say you read the Bible? You know what Jesus commanded you to do? He commands you to be a doer of the word and not just to hear it only who deceives himself. Because calamity is coming upon all the world. Calamity is coming upon all those who know God and all those who do not know him. Look, I could, be, I could have been in Japan when the calamity came. I could have been swept away by the tsunami. Does that mean that God doesn't love me? No. It means that God had caused death to come and seize upon me. He says, God said, precious in the sight is sight, and his sight is the death of his saints. Oh, death comes for all men. Death comes in many ways. Oh, don't look at death and say, oh, those people were worse sinners than we are. Oh, no, Jesus said, I tell you not. It's not true. He said, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. No, I can't be quiet about Jesus Christ, sir. <clears throat> Says Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Oh, blessed are the poor in spirit. Are you poor in spirit? Jesus didn't mean poor in your wallet. He didn't mean you were poor in the world, but poor in the spirit before God. God loves humble people. He said, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Do you mourn over your sin and your rebellion towards God? You know, the difference between all of you and my friends and I, those who know Jesus and those who do not, when you commit a crime against God, you think it's normal. You think everybody does it. You think it's okay. You think it's acceptable. But when a Christian sins against God, oh, that Christian is broken before God. That Christian is, is one who trembles before God. That Christian is one who wants to rip his heart out before God and say, oh, God, how could I sin against you? Oh, God, help me that I would not sin against you. But that's not your heart. That's not the heart of Pleasanton. Blessed are the humble, for they shall inherit the earth. Look, Jesus said the humble are going to inherit the earth. Are you humble before God? Are you humble before God? Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Look, if you hunger and thirst after righteousness, Jesus Christ promises you to be filled. But what do you hunger and you thirst after? You thirst after the world? You thirst after the pleasures of the world? You thirst after television? You thirst after movies? You thirst after entertainment? What do you thirst after? Do you, yeah, you thirst after alcohol? Well, you're going to be filled with whatever it is you thirst after. But I tell you, when you hunger and thirst after righteousness, Jesus said you shall be filled. But those of you, you that sow to sin, 
Those of you that sow disobedience towards God, you're going to reap eternal destruction of your soul. You're going to have... You're going to have the kind of life that God said, the path of the transgressor is hard. Oh, I know what that's like. That's why I tell you to turn from your sin. Call upon Jesus Christ. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake, Jesus said. You see, I am blessed by God. I am blessed by God. Whenever you revile me, whenever you speak evil of me, I am blessed by God. You see, the whole world is turned upside down. What you think is normal, God says not normal. You're taking the truth of God, you turn it upside down. And God says, woe to you that call good evil and evil good. God says, woe to you that call light darkness and darkness light. God says, woe to you that exchange bitter for sweet. Look, here in America, everybody on Friday night, Saturday night, most people go out. They go out and get drunk. They party. They fornicate. They think it's a good time to go out and do that. But God says, woe to those who are mighty at getting drunk. Woe to those who are mighty at drinking strong drink. Woe to those who are mighty at fornicating. Woe, God says. You know when God says, woe, you should fear and tremble and fall on your face before God. But most of you won't. Even as you get on your cell phone, you call the police, you go, these people are annoying me. Well, every time that you sin against God, you annoy God. Every time you break God's law, you annoy God. Every time you do one thing wrong that God told you not to do, you offend God. And God said He is angry every day. He is angry with the wicked every day. And which one are you? Are you the one that God is angry with? Are you the one that is born again, born of the Spirit of Christ? You know how I can tell you're a born again Christian? A Christian will walk by and hear the Word of God, and they may go, well, I don't think I'm called to do what they're doing. But they will hear the Word of God, and the Spirit of Christ within them will say, Oh, that's true. That's my word. This is true. And they will love it. They will love the word of God when they hear it because Christians, God said his people are not offended by the law of God. Christians are not offended by the law of God. I'm not offended by God's law. You see, when the law of God comes and convicts me of sin, it shows me God's love for me. It's God coming to me and disciplining me and putting me in the path of righteousness. Jesus said, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets 
which were before you. Listen up, folks. Be careful about what you think. Be careful about what you say because God, he hears all of your thoughts. They're like words to him, all recorded. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it gives light unto all that are in the house. He said, let your light shine before men so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. For truly I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot, one tittle, that's one period, one letter, shall in no wise pass from the law until all these things are fulfilled. Now, I'll simplify that for you. Just go to the Bible, open up in the middle where the New Testament meets the Old, and look at all the Old, and Jesus said he's going to fulfill every word. Every word is going to come to pass. Every promise that God has made. Now you might say that's a good promise. You might say that's not. But God gave a whole, whole books full of promises. And he said his word will endure forever. He said heaven and earth will pass away. But my word will never pass away. Jesus said. Sign from heaven, man. John the Apostle said, Jesus Christ. See, those that love God, they love His Word. So That's it's true. It's easy to tell those that love God from those that do not. That's true. Spirit of God lives inside the Spirit of God's children. I tell you, if you don't love God's Word... You don't love Jesus Christ. You don't love God. You're an enemy of God. And if you die in your sin, you're going to be found to be a transgressor of God's law. You're going to be found to be before the judge of all the earth. And the Bible says, the law and the prophets say, will not the judge of all the earth do what is right? True. Look, America wants justice. America looks at a man who kidnaps a woman and holds her for years and he rapes her. He does all kinds of things to her and America cries out for judgment, justice. And I tell you, God, all will appear before the judgment seat of Christ to receive their award for what they've done in the body. Whether it be good or evil. And you can deliver that man a message for me if you know him. Tell him there's no motorcycles in hell. And if he doesn't get an attitude that's improved, that's exactly where he's going. I, my desire is that he would not go there. That he would consider his latter end. That he would think of he who sits in the heavens. The earth is his footstool. And that the heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament shows his handiwork. It's okay. Do whatever you want to do. You guys think God is evil spoken of because he blew out some smoke. Big deal. God is rather magnified. See, another man made a decision. I sure hope he changes his mind. I sure hope he figures out how good God is and how merciful he is. Maybe he'll even let that man repent. Maybe tonight he'll say, consider you wicked man. Consider your wicked works. Lest my wrath be kindled just a little bit. And I destroy you, by the way. Oh, Pleasanton, wake up. Judgment's coming. Be ready to meet your maker. The just one, the holy one. 
See, it's Jesus Christ who justifies. Who are you to condemn? I'm speaking to you, Pleasanton. You say you're not being loving enough. The Word of God says love rejoices in the truth. The Bible says the law came by Moses. The law came by Jesus Christ. You see, he does what he wants with the armies of heaven and the inhabitants of Pleasanton. No man can stay his hand or say to him, What doest thou? I am home, man. I hope you repent. I love you, man. I did read my Bible. I hope you read your Bible and find out how holy and just Jesus Christ is. See, it says Jesus saves. Jesus saves. He also condemns. He does. He says the multitudes will come to me on that day and say, Oh, Lord, Lord. Oh, Lord, we've done all these wonderful things in your name. I went and fed the homeless. I gave them socks. I gave them motorcycle rides. God bless you, man. I gave them a ride in my car. Does that make you special? Does giving somebody a ride or feeding somebody make you special? God says all your righteousnesses are as filthy rags. You should be doing those things anyway. Jesus Christ makes you righteous. The blood of Jesus Christ washing away all your wickedness makes you righteous. He says the just shall live by faith. If a man take advantage of you, big deal. Big deal. You say you want vengeance. I say be careful what you ask for. God says vengeance is mine. And I will render to every man according to his works. Yeah. So what does faith look like? Let's look at faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Okay. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were formed. By the word of God. Oh, there he is again. Nothing happens without God. Jesus Christ. So that the things which are seen, which are made of things which do not appear. Oh, we know that too. They're made of molecules and atoms. Isn't that cool? All different elements, they bond together. That we might have building materials for these buildings. Copper wire to make the lights come on. Isn't God great? He provided all those things. He knew we'd need them. And he provided them. He provides for my brother and my sister too. And me. I'm in need of nothing but to delight and to do God's word. See, I don't come out here and ask you for money. I don't want your money. How's it going? I present the gospel to you free of charge. God's incredible mercy, free of charge. I don't need anything from you. But I suggest that you consider those that would ask for money from you, that they do not preach the word. They don't open up their Bible and read to you out of the Bible. Give you the wisdom of God from the Bible. Show you how good God is from the Bible. They don't tell you it's okay. Oh, everybody sins a little bit. It's okay. It's okay you cheat on your wife. It's okay. It's okay to steal from your boss. Is that true? Does anybody have any discernment? Is it okay to steal from your boss? No. Is it okay to lie to your wife? No. What about to covet your neighbor's things? No. Anybody else out here? Anybody have any discernment? Is it okay to lie to your husband? Maybe tell him he's handsome if he really isn't? That's a lie, isn't it? No, no lies are good. I'm telling you right now. A little leaven leavens the whole love. You start with a little lie and it gets a bigger lie and a bigger lie and a bigger lie and a bigger lie and your whole life is a lie. It's true. It's true, neighbors. I don't come out here because I want to come out here. I come out here because Jesus Christ sends me out here. Because some of his people are out here. 
And he says, repent, because I'm watching you. I don't want to give you what you deserve. I want to give you mercy. I want to give you grace. But if you continue in your wicked ways, I'll be forced to give you exactly what you deserve. Does anybody know what they deserve? Anybody? Anybody have any discernment? You know that food you're eating tastes good. You got a little bit of discernment. Nobody? Nobody knows anything about evil? Nobody knows the difference between evil and good? God bless you with a ticket. A ticket to heaven. What would you think of that man if he ran you over in the crosswalk as he was speeding down the street, showing everybody how bad he is? I think you guys would all start weeping, wailing, you'd jump out of your chairs and go help that woman. Am I right or am I wrong? Or would you just watch and wait for somebody else to do it? Because you don't want to get your hands dirty. You don't want to get any blood on your hands. I tell you, Pleasanton, you've got plenty of blood on your hands. There's blood all over your hands. The blood of your neighbors. The blood of your boss. The blood of your parents and your kids. It's better than the blood of you. It's okay, man. You can say whatever you want. I'm just out here to love you. I'm out here to reason with you. Of sin, law, righteousness, and judgment to come. If God is just, and he is, doesn't he have to give you what you deserve? Yeah. Unless there's a sacrifice for you. He provided one sacrifice. A lamb that he prepared for all those that he knew he was going to deliver. You see, God knows all things. He knows the thoughts of man. He knows the hearts of man. See, his eyes search to and fro throughout the world. Looking for one that has that broken heart. That humble and contrite spirit. They're ever searching. You see, he doesn't have to search too far, though, because he knows where they are. He knows where they are. He knows what they're doing. He knows what they're thinking. They're thinking, God, thank you for having mercy on me. Bless your holy name. For you are good, O oh Lord. You are good. Does any man deserve to go to heaven? Does any man deserve to go to heaven? What about a guy that drives a Denali? Thinks he's bad to the bone. A guy like that, does he deserve to go to heaven? I know, I know you're upset. It's okay. Something to think about. Something to take home with you. As your head hits the pillow tonight, that you might consider how good God is and how wicked you are. You might consider all the lies you've told. Every time you've blasphemed his name as he reached out to you and said, take my hands and I'll forgive you. As you spoke evil of your parents, as you lied, as you stole, as you looked with lust and so committed adultery, as you hated your neighbor and so you murdered him. As you made all those graven images that hang around your neck. All those crosses, that will be a testimony against you too. You see, God in his second commandment says, Thou shalt not make any graven images unto you. He said, Those that love me will worship me in spirit and in truth. Not with a graven image. That would be you, Catholics. And lukewarm Christians that know not the word of God and therefore they do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of lords and the King of kings. He has God blessed forever. He has. That wicked heart, and he's going to transform you into a new person. God says, if any man is in Christ Jesus, the old things are passed away and all things are become new. Oh, if you repent, you see the evil of your way, and you desire to turn from that wicked way, that you would not continue in it any longer. You see, you cannot serve two masters. God says you'll either love the one, and you'll hate the other. You'll cling to the one, and you'll despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. 
You cannot serve God and pleasure. You cannot serve God and lust. It's impossible. God will change your desires. He will change your affections. If you will set your mind on things above, if you'll set your heart on Jesus Christ, if you'll call upon Him to change you, if you call upon Him to know Him. You see, most of you right now, you don't understand that the dinner that you have set before yourselves is nothing better than dumb. These pleasures that you engage in in your life, these lusts that do not satisfy you, they are nothing better than you sitting in front of a meal of excrement. And God has set before you something much better. True. Oh, God has set before you something with a smell that is so sweet, so good smelling you cannot imagine it. It's himself. He sacrificed himself. Jesus Christ sacrificed his own flesh, his own blood. And he says, unless you eat of his flesh and drink of his blood, you will not enter into heaven. You will not enter into the kingdom. And yet, what do you eat? What do you drink? God says you drink down sin as if it were water. That's what God says about most of you. Don't you know what the end of that is? It's the wrath of God poured out upon you day and night. Everlasting destruction where the worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. That's the judgment for sin. That's the judgment I deserve. See, I'm no different than what most of you are still today. I was no different. Though I profess to know God, Yet with my works, I denied him. In every way, I was abominable. I loved filth, just like you most of you love filth today. But Jesus Christ changed me. Jesus Christ pulled me out from the lust, from the lies. He pulled me out from the greed. And he gave me a new heart. He cleansed me. And he caused me to see him. True. Oh, if you see Jesus Christ, oh, I haven't seen him with my eyes yet, though I know I'm going to see him with my eyes. With this flesh, I'm going to see God. But he caused me to see his character. Oh, yeah, it's true. I don't see it all the way. It's as if I'm looking through a mirror, a glass, darkly. But I'm going to see him face to face. I'm going to know as I am known. But he caused me to see him. Before all I could see was wickedness. All I could see was filth. Oh, I was covered in sin. And Jesus Christ changed me. He gave me a new heart. He gave me new affections. He caused me to love the Lord my God as I never could have without his change, without his blood being shed for me. Oh, that you would have that heart in you. A heart that would call upon Jesus Christ for deliverance. Art that would call upon Jesus Christ to take away your heart of stone and give you a new heart. Oh, you cannot love God in this world. God says, love not the world or the things in the world. If any person loves the world, the love of the Father is not in them. True. What are you loving today, Pleasanton? You see, I have not heard many people professing a love for Jesus Christ. No, God says, Jesus Christ says, when I return, shall I find faith on this earth? You know what's going to happen if Jesus Christ does not find faith on this earth when he returns? Every person without faith, God says, the unbelieving will have their part in the lake of fire where they will burn with unquenchable fire, where the smoke of their torment rises forever in the presence of Jesus Christ. It's true. Why do I declare these things to you? Do I desire them for you? No. God has no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that you would turn 
from your wicked ways and live. Oh, pleasant tent, how long will you live a life that is against God when God has given you his word? Oh, you have so much more than most of the world today. God has given you his word. You could go home tonight and call upon God to open your eyes, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. You might see God. Oh, you desire to see so many other things, and yet you do not desire to see the one who created you. Oh, it's true. The one who holds your breath in his hands. You desire to understand so many other things, and you do not desire to understand God. Oh, he's wiser than all the wisdom of all men. His foolishness is wiser than all the wisdom of all men. You desire to see strength. You go and you watch baseball games. You go and you watch football. You desire to see strength. And yet God is stronger. God says that by just the word of his power, all things were created in six days. True. Can you imagine that? And yet you don't desire to know him. How much time do you spend pursuing God who is stronger than all men, wiser than all men, richer than all men? How much time do you spend pursuing God who is better than all men? And yet you'll pursue all these other things. Oh, you deserve help. Oh, yes, you deserve destruction. You deserve fire. You deserve torment. You deserve the wrath of God being poured out upon you because all day long God stretches out his hand to you. All day long God calls you to turn at his reproof. All day long God tells you that he has the power to save you from death, to turn you from destruction, to pour out his spirit upon you, to make known his word done to you. And yet you walk in sin, you love your sin, you drink it down as if it were water. Oh yes, you deserve destruction. You deserve help. You deserve the torment, the wrath of God being poured out upon you because God offered you mercy and you trampled under your feet the Son of God, the blood of Jesus Christ that has the power to save. But you know what? I deserved it too. And God says that a dead, that a live dog is better than a dead lion because there is still hope for a live dog. How so? Well, God calls most of you dogs. God says a fool that returns to his folly is like a dog that goes back to eating its vomit or a pig that was washed who goes back to wallowing in the mire, in the mud, in its yeah. filth. That's what God calls you. That's what God called me. But I'm no longer a dog. You see, I was a live dog, and God came, and he changed me, and now I have a new nature. Amen. I have a nature that loves God and hates sin. And God would do the same for you. God says if any man is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. See, God says unless you are born again, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. You were born into this world full of sin as I was. God says all men are liars. God says from the, from the womb I went astray. That's true for you. But unless you are born again with a new nature, a nature that loves God and hates sin, you will inherit destruction rather than eternal life. Oh, repent. Call upon Jesus Christ for salvation. Because destruction's coming. Oh, you don't know when. 
God says because the judgment is not executed speedily, the heart is fully set in man to do evil. True. But how much warning did those in Sendai have before God came and he washed them away? And now they stand awaiting the judgment as most of them are in hell, awaiting the judgment of the lake of fire. And you won't have much time. You think you'll have time that you can repent later? No, God's not mocked. Whatever you sow, you're also going to reap. True. God says now is the acceptable time. Today is a day of salvation. Today you are hearing God's voice because I'm speaking his word. That's his voice. Today, if you hear God's voice, do not harden your heart, but turn unto Jesus Christ while he may be found. Come unto him while he is near. He'd pour out his spirit upon you. He would make known his word unto you. That's right here. You got it at home probably. All you got to do is open it up with a humble heart and call upon him for understanding. And he would reveal himself unto you through his word. God bless you. But if you won't hear it, oh, well, if you won't hear it, I assure you your judgment is coming speedily. Your life is like a vapor. It's just appearing for a little while and then it vanishes away. It's just like a leaf, it looks great. The flower looks great. And the next thing you know, it's all faded. That's your life. You're gone, you're here today, and you're gone tomorrow. Repent and turn to Jesus Christ while he may be found.